Bitcoin uh, is up again this morning. Actually, it's been adding to uh, its gains up almost six hundred dollars earlier this week. Uh, it crossed thirty five thousand for the first time since twenty twenty two. It's doubled for the year. Optimism uh, is surrounding the possible eventual approval of Bitcoin spot Bitcoin ETS. Uh, that has something to do with the surge. Obviously, join us now, Anthony Pompliano, founder of Pomp Investments, to try to sort out. Uh, it, it, Anything related here? There was, I guess, some ETF news, uh, although you would argue it was to be expected. So BlackRock yesterday or the day before got a QSIP number that, that, that we knew they would have to do that, right? Yeah. I mean, look, to understand really where Bitcoin is right now, you got to go back to 2018, 2019. Bitcoin had been up to 20000 in the bull market. It drew all the way down to $3,000. What happened there, and Stanley Druckenmiller said it was the thing that convinced him to go buy Bitcoin, is that none of the Bitcoiners really sold. About 80% of the people who owned it at 20000 still owned it still at 3000 Still 56% long term right now. So there's, a, there's no supply for it either. It's highly liquid. 76% hasn't been sold in the last year. 56% hasn't been sold two, in the last two years. Two years yeah. And really what we saw, what drove Bitcoin's price from that $3,000 bottom to $6,000, $69,000, I mean, 23X in about three years is that there was a supply and a demand shock. And we had printing of money, low interest rates, and we also got the halving. We look like we're headed right back to that. Right now, we do have high interest rates and they're trying not to print money, but we have a $33.5 trillion debt. They're trying to fund two proxy wars. We have the southern border issue. We've got all sorts of uh, inflation they're still trying to uh, combat. And so what's likely to happen here is that they're going to have to return to loose monetary policy. When they do that, it is likely to coincide with the Bitcoin. But, but near term, uh, just talking about the ETF, you've got nothing has happened in the last three weeks to indicate it's any closer. Well, I definitely think that it's closer, right? I mean, well, because three see, weeks went by. Hey, well, three weeks went by, but also BlackRock is now going and they're seeding the fund. They're seeding the fund in October, which is new. Correct. And so they just amended the uh, 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 application. And so really what you're just seeing is they're getting prepared for the approval. The big question is, are they going to just do they know BlackRock? anything? They may know nothing either. They may know nothing, but I don't think that uh, BlackRock is going to go through all this effort, right? Remember, there's reputation risk here in terms of people know what they're doing. And so it's much more likely that it's going to get approved. You need a different BlackRock. change on who's in charge. I mean, you've got three Democrats and two Republicans, right? Is that we, we had one of the Republicans on that and she said, I think it's I have no idea why it makes no sense. It hasn't been approved yet, but that doesn't mean the, that she's going to convince her her colleagues. At the end of the day, Bitcoin doesn't care about the politics of it all, right? Now, the SEC and other it's organizations line, definitely but, care. Well, it, here's the thing is Bitcoin is just highly, highly disciplined, right? It is the most disciplined central bank in the world. It doesn't care what's going on in the news. It doesn't care about geopolitics. It just produces yeah, but block the price block of, of Bitcoin does. The price of Bitcoin price cares, does. cares very much about what happens. Bitcoin's up 100 percent to start this year, right? And I don't think a lot of people kind of recognize that because they remember it was at 69,000. It drew down to 15, but it's up 100 percent to start the year. And so when you look at that, the market is obviously telling us something. And what we're watching is capital is flowing. Someone's mm -hmm. calling it a flight to quality. You've Not seen someone, that. Like Larry, Larry Fink. Fink. Right. <laughs> right, Larry Fink. Versus most... bonds. With the, let, me, let me see if I have this right. Can the government issue more than 21 million bonds? Uh, the government can issue as much as they want. <laughs> right, but how many Bitcoin? One of the most important, 21 million. One of the most important uh, details or, or kind of data points that I saw recently that really kind of opened my eyes was TLT from the high in 2020-2021 is down about the same that Bitcoin is. And so where bonds used to be this flight to safety, now all of a sudden you're seeing people around the world say, look, some people are still buying bonds for sure. But there are some other people who are buying Bitcoin. And given that Bitcoin is the finite asset, I think that's ultimately where you get uh, price appreciation. Well, Anthony, the only thing I was going to say is that the what Washington does is very, very important. If it weren't, there wouldn't be so many Bitcoin enthusiasts trying to do so much to, to spend money there and try and influence. If you look at Sam Bankman fried or anybody down the line, what Washington decides does matter. And I would think that having them decide something would be helpful. Like just getting rules of the road would probably. So I think that uh, the companies that deal with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, they care what Washington is doing, right? They're the ones who are spending the money. They're, they're the ones who are doing this. Bitcoin is a decentralized protocol. Bitcoin's not spending any money. Bitcoin doesn't even have a team behind it. And so I think that the companies very much care and they are lobbying and they are trying to get these uh, clarity of rules and try to you know push this forward. But Bitcoin itself, if the government tomorrow came out and banned Bitcoin, mm -hmm. everyone else around the world would say, Okay, and they probably would actually go buy it because all of a sudden they would say, hey, this is outside the system. This is something that isn't controlled by any government. It isn't controlled by any individual. And so it's this very interesting thing where decentralization of the protocol really matters. But the companies, they're still centralized companies with American citizens running them, and they definitely care what is going on in Washington. So you think 
when above the old highs, when and how much higher above the old highs. Hundreds of percent appreciation when we get to these bull markets has been the norm. I don't see that changing now. And then back to where? I mean, look, there's a cycle, right? It's very much. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a hideous, frightening cycle that just shakes you to the core when Bitcoin comes back down. It, it went to 17 from 65, right? 69. People have been on this show for years now talking about all the stocks that went up a lot, they went down a lot, and over a long period of time, they were great investments. You just kind of had to hold through all the volatility. Yeah. I think Bitcoin is really just the true free market asset, right? There is no um, you know, circuit breakers. There is nobody bailing it out. When uh, we saw FTX and other companies go under, the government didn't rush in to bail them out. They bailed out the banks. And so I think that there is this element of a free market asset is going to have way more volatility than uh, uh, something that's inside of the system. You know, it's a little weird this time, Anthony, is that you wouldn't say that there's been risk on in tech over that fault, the, the right-hand side of that. This has not been a risk-on environment from 25 to, to 34. It's, it's gone up 40% in a risk-off environment. That, the, so that almost looks like it's, it's not correlated now, and that's where Larry, the Fink got the flight to, uh, uh, that it's money, <laughs> which to call Bitcoin quality is, in a lot of people... Mine, yeah. that's anathema. One I mean, of the Charlie things, Munger thinks it's rat shit too. One of the things people have to remember is the best investors in the world act completely differently than the herd. And so right now the herd is saying we're risk off. Every great investor I know is going risk on. They're buying these assets at suppressed prices because they know what's going to happen. We're going to return to loose monetary policy and prices are going to go back up. Are we though? Higher for longer. Higher for longer. Higher for longer. You, you, uh, you eventually run into math. And ultimately, you have a $33.5 trillion debt. You added $500 billion in the last month. We're sending hundreds of billions of dollars around for these proxy wars. You just, if you're going to continue to raise the national debt, you're going to have to inflate it away. And so loose monetary policy is going right. to be the standard over the coming Let's decades. Let's go back to this idea of, and we talked about it on the broadcast a lot, this sort of buy the rumor, sell the news situation, which is if, in fact, this ETF exists, <laughs> or it, 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 there's a big announcement is that a great day for Bitcoin or is that baked into the price and you, you needed to have gotten there beforehand yeah. and actually goes down afterwards? I think it's a great point. Uh, the halvings historically have been this like buy the uh, rumor, sell the news events. Uh, the ETF probably is going to be something like that, where if, if you saw uh, this fake news, I guess it was, you know, where the ETF got approved, but it really wasn't approved. Right. Basically, price went up thousands of dollars in a few minutes, then drew right back down as soon as it was uh, determined that it was fake. And so you probably will get some sort of uh, short-term movement just out of the excitement. But I do think that this anticipation is obviously driving the price up. It was 25000 now it's 34000 You're just eating into what was potential returns on the approval. Right. And so uh, the question isn't so much what happens on day one. Right. You know, Galaxy Digital just came out with a research report. They think $14 billion will go into the ETF in the first year. If that happens, what does that do to the price? Their expectation is that's going to drive the price 75% higher. And so that's just their estimation around the ETF. If that's true, I mean, that's a pretty big price move for an asset that's already hundreds of billions of dollars in market cap. Um, I like getting for the people that are really in the cult. I mean, there's even names. So <laughs> when is the, I mean, a having almost sounds like, <laughs> like an awakening yeah. or something. When is the next halving? <laughs> when is it, it's coming, isn't it? Yeah, less than a year away. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I, I do feel sometimes like we are uh, we're, we're talking about things the same way that uh, people talk about, you know, what, when is your birthday? What is the Did you know the halving was coming? The halving is coming, Becky. I've heard this, yes. Andrew. But I also understand I where it's Prepare. I know, I know. Prepare it's like, for the halving. The halving is coming. Like what, I'm on what, the leftovers. <laughs> what is the? And I, I love Bic. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding around about. It. I think it's great. But um, what's the stock to flow right now? What, what is the number? Do you know? Do you keep track of things? There's like 900 that? Bitcoin that are coming into circulation every single day. It'll cut down to 450. Uh, the reason why the having is really important, in my opinion, is it ultimately disproves the efficient market hypothesis. Right? If you think about, everyone knows that it's coming, but. Not everyone is going to act the same. Some people think it's buy the rumor, sell the news. Is it, it, the with stock to flow, is it cheaper than gold's stock to flow right now? Do I, I don't yeah. know what gold's is, um, but Bitcoin, Bitcoin has continued to become more and more attractive over time. And then again, 76% of all Bitcoin hasn't been sold in the last year. That's from $69,000 down to $15,000, back up to $34,000. When you start looking at these numbers, why are people not selling? They obviously have some sort of long-term belief in an asset. And so if you have a highly liquid market, an ETF gets approved, tens of well, billions. There are also some of the craziest people on Twitter 
uh, as you know. Um, There's a report yesterday that the Wall Street executives supposedly are shocked at how much interest there are in these products. And I think that what we're watching in some weird way is Wall Street is being introduced to the Internet. But now this time, it's not the Internet versus Wall Street, like we saw with the meme stocks. Instead, you're seeing Wall Street and the Internet basically get on the same side of the table and Wall Street's getting excited. They're saying, wait a second, these people are insane on the Internet and we're going to have an asset or a fund that they want. That could be really interesting for us. And so maybe actually working together could be more Particularly at a time hmm. when there aren't a lot of other fees on Wall Street. Right. You know, Correct. Not IPOs, not M&A activity. So they're looking for a and, place. And it's kind of cool. You could be anywhere really on the planet with, in a place where the currency is, who knows what it is in that country where you are. And if you have a phone, you yeah. can have something that's not going down with but would you use it? I mean, I, we go use back it to for the, what? I, I use it for a hotel I'd use it if I was unbanked. If I was unbanked, I'd use it. Yeah, I, I guess. But you know, we make fun of the people who used it to pay for a pizza. Well, I'm not. I'm still. I, I, so is it an investment? It's gotten back to thirty-four thousand. It's it gotten back up. to. You're never going to want to spend it. But it's gotten back to thirty-four thousand without anyone arguing it's used as currency. Yeah, but, but no, I mean, no one's currency? arguing that anymore. Yeah. I, I do think it's a rational view to say the dollar is the greatest of all time at the moment in terms of medium of exchange, right? If you want to spend something, spend the dollar. Bitcoin has been the greatest of all time in terms of a store of value, right? And so people are buying it and they're holding it, obviously 76% of it sold in a year, and they're going to spend dollars. What the promise of Bitcoin is that it will become electronic cash. The like dirty secret is if that never happens, I'm not saying that it is not going to happen, but if it never happens, Bitcoin is still going to be highly valuable just as a store of value. And so there's still a ton of upside. And I think that's why investors are excited. All right. Pump, you, uh, I feel like we should have a disclosure for you because you're I so... I own Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. But you're so, you're so rabid. It, I mean, people need to know how rabid you are in terms of Bitcoin and just take that into account. That you could be totally wacko, right? <laughs> Maybe, but uh, you know, I say people lie, markets don't. And uh, Bitcoin right. no, in, uh, all the things you say, if you look into it closely, it, it, is, it doesn't care what anyone says about it. Yeah, Bitcoin. Pretty unique. Yeah, thanks, Anthony.